G'day guys, I've got a calculus question for you today where it's asking us to use an appropriate calculus method to find the approximate percentage change in the curved surface area of a solid cone of fixed height 20 centimetres corresponding to a 1% increase in its base radius from 10 centimetres. Okay, so let's like write down what we know. We know that we have a fixed height of 20 centimetres. So this here is going to be equal to 20. Cool. And we know that we've got a base radius that's going to be um, varying from 10. So to start with, we know that we're um, given the 1% increase in the base radius from 10 centimetres. So we know that when the radius is equal to 10, our, we're going to have a percentage change in the radius, which when we use an incremental formula or using um, small changes method in calculus, we measure the percentage change as, in this case, delta R over R is equal to 0 0.001. Great. So we also know that the curved surface area that we're looking for, which is the piece around the top of the cone, so this bit here, is equal to this formula here. So what we have is we have a formula of uh, surface area in terms of two variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to start with make this in terms of one variable, i.e. the radius. So we can uh, write down L as a function of R because we know that we have a fixed height of 20. So we know that L squared is going to be equal to H squared, which is 20, plus the radius squared. So we also can say then that L is going to be equal to the square root of 400 plus r squared. Cool, so that's going to give us our length as a function of radius. Now, the slant length there. So basically, the reason that we do this is so when we express our surface area of the curved surface, we can express this as surface area, rather than being in terms of two variables, we can express it in terms of 1. So we have pi times the radius times this rather than the length. So I'm going to write it as 400 plus r squared all to the power of a half. Great. Now, the question asks us to find the percentage change in the curved surface area. So, we are looking for delta A over A. So this is what we're trying to find in the end. So let's go about trying to start with finding a expression for approximating uh, delta A. So we're going to use our incremental or small changes um, formula, which says that delta A can be approximated using the derivative of A with respect to R, evaluated when, in this case, when R is going to be equal to 10 times Delta R. Sorry, it's very used to writing delta X, so forgive me about it for that. So, what we first of all have to uh, calculate is this. We have to find the derivative of A with respect to R. So let's go about doing that. So, we're looking for DA 
dr, and this is going to equal, now I'm going to take, to make that easier for me, I'm going to take the pi out the front and say, well, this is equal to pi times the derivative of r times 400 plus r squared to the half. Cool. So hopefully you guys are aware of the product rule that we could use for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the, this is going to equal pi times the derivative of the front will just be 1 because the derivative of r is just 1. So we're going to have just the back plus the derivative of the back which is going to be 1 over 2 bracket 400 plus r squared all to the half times by 2r. So we're going to use the chain rule to differentiate this bit. Now I'll do that over here. So if we want to find the derivative of 400 plus r squared all to the half, this is going to equal, we take the half down the front times by the middle, left the same, take one away from the power, and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Now this is going to simplify with this is going to go down to the bottom, so we're going to have 2r all over 2 bracket 400 plus r squared to the half. So the 2's will cancel out and we're just left with r over 400 plus r squared to the half. And that will be times by r. So we're going to have another r up the top. So shorthand for this is going to be r squared over 400 plus r squared to the half. I'm going to close that bracket. So there's our derivative. Now that's not really going to help us because we need a little bit simpler than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically get the same denominator here by multiplying this one here by 400 plus r squared all to the half over 400 plus r squared all to the half. So I'm just going to give myself some room. So we're going to simplify this. Let's take it up here. Cool, and we are going to have, so there's my derivative. Now what I have to do is I have to multiply, I've got to try and find dA over A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply in this formula, I'm going to multiply or multiply by 1 over A or just divide both sides by a. So I'm going to have a function that looks like this. I'm going to have a delta a over a is approximately equal to dA over dr evaluated when r is equal to 10 times by delta r over a. So you can see I've divided both sides by a and then what I'm, so I'm going to input everything that I have. So I'm going to have which is delta a over a is equal to or can be approximated by the derivative of a with respect to r which is this function here, we have 
2 pi r squared plus 200 all over the square root of 400 plus r squared. And that's going to be multiplied by delta r divided by a. Now, a is equal to, let's scroll back here. So this is going to be times by square root of 400 plus r squared and it's also times by pi r at the bottom. So I've sort of run out of space here haven't I? So this is going to be multiplied by pi r. Cool, so we can simplify this. We know that the pi is at the top and the bottom will cancel. We know that if we have the square root of 400 plus r squared times the square root of 400 plus r squared, they are going to just make 400 plus r squared. And that r is just going to sit down there underneath this delta r. So we're going to be left with delta a over a can be approximated by 2r squared plus 200 all over 400 plus r squared times delta r over r. Now we know that when r is equal to 10, delta r over r is equal to 0 0.01. So we're going to say that da over a can be approximated by 2 bracket 10 squared plus 200 over 400 plus 10 squared times 0 0.01. So what do we have? We have 100 plus 200 is 300 times 2 is 600. Over 500 times 0 0.01 which is equal to 600 over 500 times 1 over 100, which is equal to 6 over 500, or 0 0.0012. So the answer to our question then becomes, Therefore, the corresponding um, percentage change in the surface area, so delta A over A, is going to be equal to 0.12% when R, or you could say radius, changes by 1% and that's when radius equals 10. Relatively tricky problem. We've had to um, work out what um, the surface area is in terms of radius. We've then had to differentiate that function with respect to radius. We've then had to simplify the derivative. We've then had to um, then like rearrange the derivative formula so it then fits into our increments formula. We've then had to then simplify that again so we can end up with a delta R on R. 
after we've done that, we then substitute in when radius equals 10, we evaluate the derivative when radius is 10 and multiply that by our percentage change in radius, which was 1%. And once you've finished that, then you will have finished your full answer. So I know this is a very hickledy-pickledy way of going about uh, solving this question, but I just thought I'd get some pen to paper and just do it as quickly as I could. And, you know, if this helps some of you guys, it, you know, great. If it doesn't help you guys, well, then I'm sure there are many other of my videos which are on this particular topic which you can have a look at. So, you know, if it did help you guys, you know, sorry about the speed in which I went through it, but if it did help, you know, give us a like, subscribe to my channel, I put out new videos almost every day, but until next time guys, enjoy your maths.